how do you make sure the team handbook does not contain, uh, contain incorrect or out of date information? Are there owners for particular areas? Yes, so handbook is a general responsibility of everyone, but each section should be maintained by people who edit it, who uh, re mm, relates to this department, yeah, or to area uh, in, in the documentation. For example, if you are in, uh, let's say, engineering manager, yeah, you describe the engineering workflow with labels in the handbook, then before you change the workflow, you must change the handbook. Otherwise, the change is not real. So think about it like, unless it's in, in the handbook, it's not real, yeah? <laughs> so um, people update it, it's their responsibility. If they add something, they usually are eager to maintain it, to keep it, uh, information up to date. If someone notices that information is out of date, it's not real, uh, they usually just either change it, propose a change and pin the people related to it, or it's, it's Git repository, you can find an author, you can find the history of the change. You can find the person that added it and contact him directly, right? It's, uh, it's easier. Um, how do you ensure that employees consistently document information to the company handbook wiki? Yeah, uh, we, <laughs> we make them do it. <laughs> so every time we go to the Slack, existing employees, right? We go to the Slack and we see some, well, we have this channel in Slack, questions. And someone asks a question and they got the answer and there is no response with a link to the handbook later, like how are an hour later, two hours later. We immediately pin this person, like, have you documented it? If not, why? When you documented it? Please pin me when you documented it. So we actually, like, uh, once we see any information that is not a link to the handbook, we immediately pin this person in Slack, in email, in issue tracker, asking for a link. And they kind of a bit embarrassed, right? <laughs> they didn't provide it. And uh, they immediately edit. And it will, it's, it scales, you know, like people who know the process, who get used to it, then teach other people. And it's part of like handbook usage. You must read this section on onboarding, right? And one of the uh, sentences says here, like, you must document the answer and you must provide a link to the handbook. Uh, how is going the migration to Vue.js? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Vue.js is a front-end framework and we were one of the pioneers to adopting it in GitLab and it's going pretty well. Uh, last time I spoke with uh, our front-end lead maybe half a year ago, uh, he was really, really excited about it. He said that it's really well done. Uh, framework, yeah, and we we don't do such thing as like refactor everything with a new technology, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's definitely a bad thing to do. So uh, we built all new stuff with UGS, and we slowly, once we realize it's a good thing, we slowly start rewriting the old one. Uh, so we kind of, in transitional state, we have half of the things with UGS, half of the things is still like, uh, yeah, playing JavaScript, jQuery, and such kind of things, but uh, it's going really well, like, the summary. <laughs> uh, what tool do you use to build your employer handbook? WordPress or Wiki framework? We use GitLab. So, uh, <laughs> handbook is a Git repository, yeah? Every page on the handbook has a link at the bottom, edit this page. When you click this page, it will bring you in GitLab to the text file, uh, file to the file in GitLab in edit mode. So you immediately in the web editor, in uh, this particular file, you make a change, you press commit changes, you submit a merge request, and that's uh, how you propose a change. And then you either assign it to relevant person, yeah? If it's something related to, let's spend $1 million uh, on Swag, yeah? Then you probably should assign it to CEO, right? <laughs> Otherwise, you can assign it to, like, to your buddy, like, to someone who is responsible for this area, yeah? So it's, it's easy, it's Git repository, uh, all history is preserved, uh, it's used by GitLab, so uh, even our, everyone use it, our marketing, we make our marketing use it, salesperson use it, people ops use it, so that's how. <laughs> uh, 
another question. Are there any sensitive scenes that you've decided to exclude from the handbook? Yes, this is a good one. So we follow this idea that everything is public unless it must be private. And there are only a few areas that we keep uh, private. It's salaries. We consider it confidential. So we have a compensation cal cal calculator. You kind of can get a range of what you will earn, depends on your position, seniority, but it's a flexible number, like right? So exact salaries are hidden. Financial information that is either we not allowed to share by the law or it's not in the interest of the company and the board, it's also hidden, yeah? Otherwise, everything else is public. So public by default, if it's something that will definitely hurt the company, yeah, you either speak to some of the executives before sharing it, yeah? Or, um, yeah, otherwise keep it private. But it's it's really little little percent of the things that you really want to uh, prevent from sharing, yeah. Have you ever had someone in the team add something sensitive that should not be public knowledge? I don't quite remember any occurrence, but like, if something bad can happen, it happens, right? So I'm sure that was the case, I'm sure that we reverted, and I don't, like, with startups, everything changed really fast. Even if you publish some financial information, it won't be relevant in, in a year, right? So we just reward this information, still in Git history, right? Sometimes we just wipe this commit if there is no commit after it. But otherwise, like, yeah, we just reverted it. People who want to find out, they will find out, but again, it won't be relevant in, in certain amount of time. And it's a risk that we are willing to accept just to make sure that people don't hide too much, which is uh, like, like parental leave policy, yeah? We want this to be public because it benefits us, right? We don't want people seeing that, yeah, it's probably something that should be private and like I raise and not share it. Good, let's go. Who is responsible for reviewing the content in the handbook? Depends on what is the page, what is the content, yeah? Uh, strategic things, you assign it to CEO or one of the executives. If it's engineering workflow, you assign it to engineering manager. If it's a recommendation, what kind of ergonomic chair you would suggest for developers, you can just assign it to uh, some other developer. Yeah, it's, it's not a big deal. So uh, if, if you assign it to the wrong person and it gets merged, it's fine. If we'll find out that it was a wrong thing, we'll just revert it later. There is nothing, there's no information that can destroy your company if you accidentally get it into the handbook, right? Uh, another question is, do you pay people based on their country or their skills or both? Both, so uh, our calculator uh, is based on three things, rent, rent price, yeah, uh, skills, and yeah, and uh, basically what kind of expertise, right? What uh, are you a developer, are you a marketing person, are you, I don't know, like executive, yeah? So it will be a, dif a bit different skill. So it's a combination of three things, yeah, I calculated together into, uh, um, yeah, into uh, one, one number. Other remote staff from other countries hired as full-time workers and not independent contractors. How to do that? So we started as contractors and we open entity in every country uh, where we have few employees, yeah. Uh, there is a scene uh, at the beginning, it's, yeah, when it's like 10 of you, it's really hard to start opening an entity in every country, like you don't have uh, time for this, you don't have budget. So we start as contractors because it's simple, yeah. But as soon as we grow, we want to uh, provide people with uh, proper, yeah, like uh, local, companies yeah they work for so we all we have a lot of entities in UK in Berlin in, uh, in Germany in France uh, in Netherlands uh, yeah many countries there uh, probably there are more people right now working as uh, yeah full-time workers versus contractors but contractors is just a legal scene right it's all a full-time people like we don't hire uh, you know like for part-time job it's it's all like eight hours a day, please. <laughs> Full time workers. Yeah. Thank you.